Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ Bless. My name is Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right, so we're back with another 15 minutes with the captains. Today we're going over uh, the title, Thou Shall Not Abhor an Edomite. All right, uh, so let's jump right into it. I want to start with Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 11, and verse 24, because this is where a lot of y'all get that mindset from, right here from this scripture. And a lot of um, so-called Israelites, they, they also... Um, have this type of mindset. Watch this. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11 and verse 24. Uh -huh. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. You see that the scripture says, and abhorrest nothing that he has made. Read it again. For thou lovest all the things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. Mm -hmm. For never wouldst thou have made anything if thou hast hated it. Hmm. All right, so if you close the scripture right there, yeah, that's going to sound like God loves everybody. Mm. That's what it would sound like. Why would he make somebody um, to destroy? That doesn't make any sense. But you're not reading in its context. You're not reading in its context. Give me the book of uh, Psalms 45 and 7 real quick. All right, you have to read, what, precept upon precept to get an understanding. We're starting here to show you when we get to Deuteronomy 23, you got to read it in context as well. Precept upon precept. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 45 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Thou lovest righteousness. God said he loves righteousness, read. And hatest wickedness. And hatest wickedness. Now, for if you even go to Genesis, you read about all types of sins, mm -hmm. okay? Now you, you, you go to present day, there's one particular group of people on the face of the earth that's causing much wickedness, all right? But if you only isolate what wisdom of Solomon 11 and 24, you'll have that type of mindset when it comes to everything. Right. Give me another one real quick. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. Proverbs 16 and 4. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. The Lord hath made all things for himself. God made all things for himself. Read. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. You see that? Even the wicked for the day of ick, evil. Excuse me. So it said in Psalms, he loves righteousness and hates wickedness. Mm -hmm. But he said he made it, but he made it for the day of evil. Okay, give me wisdom of Solomon. Let's go back. Chapter 14. Uh, read verse 9. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 9. Come on. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. They're what? Hateful unto God. Hateful unto God. So you just can't go to one scripture and think that's what it's talking about. You can't do it. Right. Now, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 12. And just to show you, whenever you read in a chapter, you got to read it in its context. Give me verse 4, Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 4. Oh, 11 and 4. Excuse me. Wisdom of Solomon 11 and 4. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 and verse 4. Uh-huh. When they were thirsty, they called upon thee, and water was given them out of the flinty rock. Read it again. Verse 4. Come on. When they were thirsty, they called upon thee, and water was given them out of the flinty rock, and their thirst was quenched out of the hard stone. Who's the they? Is that talking about everybody? Absolutely not. That's talking about the children of Israel. When you read the book of Numbers, that's when the Most High God provided them with water out of a rock. Right. All right. Uh, jump down to verse. Yeah, just keep reading. Keep reading. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. For by what things 
their enemies were punished. By the same, they in their need were benefited. Who were the enemies at that time? The Egyptians were their enemies at that time. Read. Verse 6. Uh -huh. For instead of a fountain of a perpetual running river troubled with foul blood. That's when uh, the Mosai turned the river into blood. So long story short, we know what happened to the Egyptians. Right. So when we get to verse 24, how in the world is he saying that he loves he doesn't hate the Egyptians. Yes, he does. He hates the Egyptians too. Right. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna get everything in his context. Give me Deuteronomy twenty three and seven. So now we're gonna get into it. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty three and verse seven. Come on. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. So the Bible says you shall not abhor an Edomite. Abhor. The definition means to hate. Okay. Read on. For he is thy brother. For he is thy brother. Uh, Jacob, the forefall of Israel, and Esau uh, were. Uh, twins, twin brothers, okay? Read on. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, read. Because thou wast a stranger in his land. All right, so at this time, that was the law, okay? At this time, that was the law. So just like we showed y'all, all right, you have to go precept upon precept to find out what God is trying to tell us, all right? Jump up to verse 3. We're going we're gonna to deal step by step. Watch this. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 3. Mm-hmm. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right, so we see right here that um, when it comes to Ammon and Moab at this time, they should not enter into the congregation. Let's find out why. Read on. Even to their tenth generation uh -huh. shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. So this is contrary to the Edomite and the Egyptian at this time. Read on. Because they met you not with bread and with water mm -hmm. in the way. When ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, the Pethor of Mesopotamia, uh -huh. to curse thee. To curse thee. So they did some evil. So instead of uh, looking out for the children of God, what did they decide to do? They decided to try to curse us to get us out of the land. Uh, from there, give me, um, give me the book of Nehemiah 13. Watch this. Give me Nehemiah 13 and 1. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 1. Uh -huh. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. And therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God. They should still not come into the congregation of God. Read. Forever. Mm -hmm. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. Now it says forever. It says forever, forever, forever. Um, from there. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23, okay, let's go back to where we left off. I think he was at verse 5 or 6. I think you're at verse 6. Pick up right there. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all the days forever. So thou shalt never seek the peace of the Ammonites, the Moabites mm -hmm. forever, okay? At this time. All right, now read verse 7. Verse 7. Come on. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, mm -hmm. for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. Okay, so let's see if anything changed. Now let's go to the book of Amos, the first chapter. Let's go to Amos chapter 1, okay, and give me verse 9. The book of Amos chapter 1 and verse 9. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. They delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. When did this take place? This took place during the Babylonian captivity. Okay. Uh, jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother. He did pursue his brother. Who is his brother? Jacob, right. the Israelites. He pursued his brother, read. With the sword. With the sword. That's it on that? And did cast off all pity. He didn't worry. He didn't uh, remember the brotherly covenant. Okay, read on. And his anger did tear perpetually and kept his wrath forever. He kept his wrath forever. Forever. Okay. Give me one, uh, Psalms 137 real quick. We look at Psalms 137, and give me verse, uh, mm, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. In the day of Jerusalem, read. Who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. So it says R-A-S-E. That's talking about destroy, destroy. All right, so when the Babylonians came to, uh, to siege Jerusalem... 
eat them instead of minding their business or instead of sticking up for their brother, they decided to say, you know what, destroy it, destroy it. I'm in agreement with you, okay? Read that uh, scripture again. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom uh -huh. in the day of Jerusalem who said, race it, race it. Even to the foundation thereof. Come on. O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. I uh, read. Who art to be destroyed. Who ought to be what? Destroyed. Who ought to be destroyed. So once they decided to have that uh, perpetual hatred forever, mm -hmm. from that day on, God decided, you know what? Now they're going to be destroyed, destroyed. forever. Right. Okay. Give me the book of uh, First Ezra chapter 4. Give me First Ezra chapter 4 and uh, start at verse 40, 45. The book of 1st Ezra, chapter 4, and verse 45. Come on. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned. With you see that thing? During the Babylonian captivity, the Edomites did what? Read it again from the top. Then thou also hast vowed to build up the temple mm -hmm. which the Edomites burned when Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. The Chaldees, that's, uh, give me that Ezra 5 and 12 real quick so they understand that. The precept for the Chaldees or Chaldeans. Give me that. Ezra chapter 5 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. But after that, our fathers had provoked the God of heaven unto wrath. Come on. He gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Read. The king of Babylon. The king of who? Babylon. Read. The Chaldeans. The who? Chaldeans. Right. So let's go back to Ezra. So the Chaldeans are the Babylonians. Read 45 again. First Ezra 4 and verse 45. Mm -hmm. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned. The Edomites burnt that thing. So they broke the brotherly covenant. They didn't care nothing about the Israelites. Come on. When Judea was made desolate by the Chaldees. Uh-huh. And now, O Lord the King, this is that. Yeah, drop that. Let's go to uh, Lamentations 4. Lamentations chapter 4, and I want verse uh, 22. I mean 21. Start at 21. <clears throat> Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 21. Come on. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, mm -hmm. that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. They're going to be made desolate because they was in agreement uh, with what Nebuchadnezzar was doing to the children of Israel. Keep in mind, Lamentations, this is Jeremiah lamenting about the destruction of, of, of Jerusalem by the hand of the Babylonians. All right, read on. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. The punishment of Edom's iniquity is, is accomplished. Now, since you wanted to jump into something you had nothing to do with, right. now you're going to be punished for your iniquity. Read. Mm. O daughter of Zion. O, uh -huh. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Come on. He will visit thine iniquity. O daughter of Edom, mm -hmm. he will discover thy sins. Now it's all about Edom. So meaning what? What happened in the uh, book of Deuteronomy, that changed. All right, that's over with because who transgressed against that? Edom transgressed against that thing. Uh, give me that in uh, Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 35 and 15. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 15. Come on. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, mm -hmm. because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. See that thing? So if you wanted to hold uh, a perpetual hatred forever... So now the Most High God said, okay, that's, that's a bet. I'm going to do the same thing against you. Right. Read it again. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, mm -hmm. because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir. O Mount Seir. That's the ancient name of Edom. That's where they used to dwell. Uh, now it's called Petra. Okay. Um, drop that. Let's go to uh, Joel 3.19 because... And Deuteronomy 23 and 7, it mentions the Egyptians as well. You know, a lot of people, a lot of scoffers out there, when we at camp, they like to say, what about Deuteronomy 23 and 7? Oh, why'd you bring that up, brother? Well, it says, don't abhor an Edomite. Why don't you ask about the Egyptians? Right. Well, I don't ever ask that question, man, because they got Stockholm Syndrome. They, they love their oppressor more than they love their own brother. But let's read about uh, more about Edom and uh, the Egyptians. Watch this. Joel chapter 3 and verse 19. Come on. Egypt shall be a desolation. It says who? Egypt shall be a desolation. So Edom is not going to be the only desolation, okay? Egypt is also going to be a desolation. So that means what? It's not talking about um, the Bible saying in Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Now it's saying that's over with the Egyptians as well. Right. Just like uh, that no longer applies to Edom, it's one and the same. Read it again. 
Egypt shall be a desolation. Come on. And Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. Uh-huh. For the violence against the children of Judah. That's the reason right there. For the violence against the children of Judah, the children of Israel. Okay? Let's drop that. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Okay? We almost done. Deuteronomy 23 and 7, but I want 7 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7. Come on. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, mm -hmm. for he is thy brother. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. All right, so the same way Ammon and Moab can never enter, Egypt and Edom can no longer enter because what they did against the children of God. Okay, read on. Verse 8. The children that are begotten of them. The what? The children that are begotten of them. The what? Begotten of them. The children that are begotten of them, come on. Shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. So let's see if that, if that one still holds mm. strong, okay? Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and 16. All right, talking about the children of them, okay? Read that. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 16. Come on. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee uh -huh. and consider thee, saying, is the man that made the earth. Read it, read it correctly. Read it again. Verse 16. Uh -huh. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? So all the nation can be like, this is who it is. Who is responsible for making the earth to tremble? Or Who's responsible of having all of the uh, quote-unquote technology that's advanced more than anybody else? Who's responsible for uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki for dropping the atomic mm. bomb? Who's responsible uh, of spreading democracy everywhere? Who's the quote-unquote mightiest nation on the face of the earth? Who is that man? It's a so-called white man. It, according to the scriptures, his name is Edom, Idumia, uh, Mount Seir. That's who it is. Read it again. Verse 16, mm -hmm. they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee Come on. and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That's how you know it ain't no spiritual being. No, it's an actual man. It's an actual people. Come on. That did shake kingdoms. That, that did shake kingdoms. Now jump down to verse 21. Watch this. Verse 21, mm -hmm. prepare slaughter for his children. Do what? Prepare slaughter for for his children. Prepare slaughter. That means they're going to get put to death. Right. So hold that. Go back to Deuteronomy 23 and 8. Let's answer this question real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 8. Watch this. Deuteronomy 23 and 8. Uh -huh. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord. No longer is that held. Right. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and 21. Watch this. Isaiah 14 and 21. Mm -hmm. Prepare slaughter for his children. Prepare slaughter for his children. Read. For the iniquity of their fathers. For the iniquity of their fathers. Uh huh. That they do not rise. That they do not rise. So let's drop that. Last scripture. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 75 verse 10. Okay, Psalm 75 and verse 10. Because you got to understand, all these other nations outside of Israel, they're in agreement with Edom mm. or Esau. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 75 and verse 10. Uh -huh. All the horns of the wicked. Those horns is going into kings or rulers. Read it again. All the horns of the wicked uh -huh. also will I cut off. You see that thing? So all of those other nations that want to be in cahoots with Edom, he's going to do what? I will cut off. Uh huh. But the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. The horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Who are the righteous? Isaiah chapter 26, verse 1. Last scripture. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 1. Who are the righteous? Okay. All right, watch this. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 1. Uh huh. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Uh huh. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Mm -hmm. Open ye the gates. That the righteous nation, that the what? Righteous nation, Come on. which keepeth the truth, may enter in. So at the end of the day, from beginning to the end of the Bible, it's always been about the Israelites. Right. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. 
Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth